Well, good morning, church, on this Labor Day weekend. Are you glad to be in the Lord's house? Amen. Amen. Couple announcements I want to give to you. First of all, I want to let you know about the uh, flowers this morning. They're given in uh, memory of Byron Russell's birthday. And uh, Miss Ann says, and, and also in, in memory of our, our uh, brave and honor of our veterans. Uh, which today, does anybody know what today is other than Sunday? September 1st. <laughs> nah, it was the beginning of World War Correct. Correct. Beginning of World War II, there was, I read an article on it and I thought, wow. Um, and so I, just some piece of information for you this morning. You can go share it at the dinner table this afternoon. Couple announcements I want to give to you. First of all, uh, Roadrunner Breakfast this Tuesday at Mikasa. Uh, ladies Bible study that evening, Tuesday evening at the Briscoes. Choir practice at 6 o'clock, ladies Bible study at 7.15. Wednesday night we start Awana, all right, and we're excited about it. If you uh, can help out, if you will see me um, after church, if you'd be interested in helping out uh, in, in Awana, whether it's uh, monitoring a class, listening, helping a teacher teach, I believe we have all our teachers, but you know, sometimes when you get seven or eight or nine, five, uh, fourth and fifth grade boys or girls sometimes for that matter, right June? <clears throat> you got to kind of stay on them. And uh, so if you would like to help out in that, if you would, let me know. And then also Thursday night, don't forget Bible study at the speeds at 630. Um, next Sunday, we'll, we'll, our youth parents will have a meeting immediately following the morning worship service. Uh, that's for our Unite groups, and being the holiday this weekend, there will be no church tonight, nor will there be youth um, community groups tonight. Um, 15th of uh, September is uh, First Responder Sunday. We'll honor all our first responders. We've got a special baptism that's going to take place on that day, Mr. Mike Morris. And so we're excited about that. And by the way, I don't know if it's congratulations on retirement, or do we congratulate Casey, or do we pray for Casey? Yes. Yes, all right. Uh, retired this past week. Um, he finished. Retired. He's got uh, other and there. Absolutely. Game warden. Now, for you hunters, that doesn't mean you can go out and just shoot anything, okay? I just, just want you to know that. Uh, there'll probably be someone that'll step in in this area. So just letting you know, and don't, don't try to buddy up to him, think you can get off still, see? Uh, because he'll do it. But uh, now the work begins, right, Mike? Amen. You'll be hearing more about that in, in the coming. The 29th of September, uh, we'll have our Lord's Supper. The 28th of uh, September will be Ladies Craft and Chat. Um, any other information, men's breakfast is on the 19th this month. Any, am I missing any announcements? The luncheon. Did you let them know there was a luncheon? On the 15th, there is a luncheon. Thank you, Miss Linda. We are going to do like we did last year with our first responders. Had a tremendous turnout and I uh, want to invite you to be a part of that. If you hadn't been contacted for beans, potato salad, or coleslaw, we need desserts, breads, things of that nature, correct? Yes, bring a dessert if you haven't been contacted. Bring a dessert. I've been instructed. And uh, so, did I miss something? Banana pudding would be appropriate. You know. No, let me tell you. Banana pudding and pecan bars. Let me tell you what happened. I'm not trying to give any underlying messages here. But I want to tell you about our ladies in the kitchen. And I don't know if it was the ladies or not. But they know I like banana pudding. And then the last meal we had, the banana pudding went quick. I mean, it was gone. Did you know they had stuck a whole pan in the back of the refrigerator? Yeah, somebody was gonna take it home to chickens. I said, no, we're not. We're not giving that to chickens. Chickens eat chicken feed. 
They don't eat bananas. <laughs> anyway, so I found it. You can try to hide it, you can hide it, but I will find it if I can. No, they didn't do that. I'm just kidding. I don't want the ladies mad at me. They Any, are. they are already? <laughs> Any announcements that I'm missing? Miss Courtney. See you at the poll. It's, uh, September, 25th. September 25th is the see you at the poll. That's right. And then Women of Joy, they're going to be leaving Friday uh, for a conference. Uh, am I driving still? Just because I was driving, you found another driver. Yeah. Amen. 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 All right. Well, they're going to have a good time. They'll be gone Sunday. They won't be here, but we will. And uh, any other announcements? Sorry about that. Miss Vicki. Get together. That's, that's right, and if you are a secret sister, don't forget to check the parlor each Sunday, so some of them. And they won't let us guys do that. We might have secret brothers on that. Anybody else? Oh, Miss Mona. That was Pearl Harbor, is that not correct? Yes. Seventh was Pearl Harbor. This is what initiated um, Japan and, and Germany and Poland and anyway. Any other announcements that I'm missing before I get in trouble? Miss Sarah, sorry. Okay, Tola grandparents will have a luncheon on the night, uh, so you'll want to, if you can help out at all, sit with those youngins. They are a blast. Some of them have two or three that's in Tola, and so they can't be at both lunches. If one of them has to be back to work or something of that nature, so if you can make it. Uh, we would appreciate it very much. And uh, also, Tola, if you order on Amazon, uh, Amazon Smile, uh, if you will do that, they, Amazon Smile, it's the same price as what you'd pay on regular Amazon. It is Amazon, but if you order through Amazon by any chance, if you would, uh, if you do Smile and they donate to charitable groups, Tola is on there. You'll see it under Tola Foundation. If you would, click that as your um, charitable gift uh, that they'll give only about what 5% or 0.05% uh, of it. It's not a lot but if you know every little bit helps and uh, we would appreciate that very much. Anybody else that I'm missing? Some of you have come as our guests this morning. I, I, I know we've got a, a good number in with family and I uh, want to give you an opportunity to meet them. I know Too Tall is trying to hide out up top but I'm not going to let him do it. And, uh, but I want you to meet some of the finest people in the world. If you'll take that information card that's located in your bulletin, fill it out, drop it off in the offering plate as it comes by, we would love to have a record of your visit. Church family guests, let's stand and let's greet one another.
morning, church. As you're making your way back to your seats, let's uh, start the singing with number 295, All Hail King Jesus. Oh, <coughs> excuse me, we'll try that again. All Hail King Jesus. sing through that again and I just want you to think about the words we're going to sing here all eternity this is but a breath but we get to have all eternity and this is what we get to do just sing to our Lord let's go through it one more time oh hail King Jesus oh hail Emmanuel King of Kings Lord of Lords Let's pray together. Father, we love you and we thank you. And we, God, we just give you the praise and glory for who you are. Lord, as we sing these songs, all hail King Jesus, Lord. It's all about you. And Lord, we will get that. And we do have that opportunity to sing it, Lord, forever and ever and ever. Why? Because of your majesty. Because of who you are. And we thank you for that. Lord, thank you for allowing us to worship you this morning. Lord, thank you for the privilege that we have to sit in an air-conditioned room. And Father, without threat of persecution, that God, we can lift up your name and be glorified. And you be glorified. Lord, we love you. Forgive us for when we fail you. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. All right, y'all can be seated. We'll continue singing now. With leaning on the everlasting arms, number 453. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, being on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the 
path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What has to dread what have I to fear leaning on the everlasting arms I had blessed peace with my Lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms If you'd stand for our offertory, we're going to continue with Because He Lives, 449. Let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, what a wonderful song you gave us this morning. What a wonderful truth to know because he lives. Anything that this whole world can throw at us that you have in control, Father God. We just thank you for your blessings. Just thank you for this time. Father God, we just um, ask for rain, if it be your will, upon your time, we could sure use some, Lord. As we continue our service this morning in giving, I just pray that you would open our hearts and open our pocketbooks and give. And help us to, um, to be the hands and the feet of this church that you have called us to be through this offering. Ask these things in your son's most holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir, Miss Claudia. That uh, caught me off guard there. Ooh, there we go. Somebody must have messed with the sound. It wasn't me, Jim Powell. It was not me. You got your Bibles, Acts chapter 3. I do want to encourage you to be in prayer for Odessa, Midland area, another shooting that took place. Um, 
You know, I was reminded as I was putting that together and listening to some of the news. Again, it's, it's those first responders who run toward the danger, whether it be a fire, whether it be a raid, whether it be a gun, gun battle, whatever it is. And so we're going to honor them on the 15th of September, but in that process, be praying for Middle and Odessa area. Uh, I know some of you have family out that way and probably worried and checking on them, but I just um, wanted you to be aware. If you got your Bibles, Acts chapter 3, beginning in verse 1, I want to talk to you a little bit about if Jesus or if God showed up, if God showed up as we read this passage of Scripture. Now Peter and John were going up together to the temple complex at the hour of prayer, three in the afternoon. And the man who was lame from birth was carried there to a place every day at the temple gate called Beautiful so that he could beg from those entering the temple complex. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple complex, he asked for help. Peter, along with John, looked at him intently and said, Look at us. So he turned to them, expecting to get something from them. But Peter said, I don't have silver or gold, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Get up and walk. And then taking him by the right hand, he raised him up and at his feet and his ankles became strong. And he jumped up and he stood and he started to walk and he entered the temple complex with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized that he was the one who used to sit and beg at the beautiful gate of the temple complex. So they were filled with awe and astonishment at what had happened to him. Can you imagine, church, what that would be like. Matter of fact, put it more on a personal level. You're, you're at home and, and, and you're, you're sitting and watching the Texans or the Cowboys play football and you get a knock on your door or your doorbell rings. You answer the door and when you open it, you discover that God had come to your house. What would you do? How would you respond? What would you change in your day or your week or your afternoon? It's true that God's with you every day and that He sees, He hears, and He knows all that there is because I believe nothing is hidden from God. What would happen if He showed up in person and in bodily form to visit with you? What would happen? Well, put your feet or put yourself in the shoes of Peter and John. In the passage of Scripture that we just read, they witnessed Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and, and they witnessed His ascension to heaven, and they, they followed His words by returning to the upper room, and they were praying for ten days in Jerusalem, and they saw some amazing things happen. And God showed up in person, in power, and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And this event was unusual enough to gain the attention of thousands. It was loud enough for the entire community to hear and to come running, but it was powerful enough that 3,000 people ended up giving their hearts to Christ. But it didn't just stop there. Because God showing up in person and of the Holy Spirit, chapter 2 tells us that the people were being saved not just every once in a while or not just when He showed up, even though they did. It was happening all the time on a daily basis. The story will help us. When God shows up, what follows? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever gone to a party? It wasn't going particularly well. It didn't matter if it was an office party or, or, or whatever it is. It was kind of boring. It was dull. Really, it was kind of lifeless until that person showed up. That one person. 
It's the life of the party. He or she shows up. They have the charisma. They have the personality that gets them there. Things change and all of a sudden it becomes fun, exciting, and yes, maybe even a little bit unpredictable at times. Well, at the risk of being perceived wrong, it's kind of what happens when God shows up in a manifest way. Things change. He changes perceptions. He changes prayers. He changes purpose. And He even changes people when God shows up. When God shows up, perceptions, those things that we perceive, are corrected. You've heard perception is reality, but when we perceive that something is of little or no concern to us, then we ignore the issue. For instance, we know there's many problems in our, in our nation and in our land. But how much of that is my responsibility? How much of that is the church's responsibility? Oh, we, we know the church needs to be revived and culture needs to be spiritually awakened, but you know, I'm just not, I'm not even going to discuss it. I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm not even going to read about it. I'm not even going to watch it. That, that's what usually happens. We tend to ignore it. Hoping that it'll go away. But what about the unchurched? Or the unchanged? Or the unsaved? Much of the time that we have is a perception that we are responsible only for mine, ours, our own. While we miss the true intent of what the Lord was talking about. He shows up, then our perceptions are corrected. Now look back at Peter and John. They were at a gate called Beautiful. Cripple man is placed there. Interesting this was not the first time these men have passed this crippled man. Scripture tells us that he was placed there every day. So why is it that Peter and John saw this man at this time? I believe that God, through His Holy Spirit, had showed up in Peter and John's life. And they responded. Jesus touched them. He gave them power. They saw the need as something for which under God that they were responsible. Truth is, it doesn't matter how good we are, until we see needs, eternal or societal, as our responsibility, we won't respond. But when God shows up, we will see and we will do. Come to think of it, could this be why we don't see God to show up in a manifest way? Could it be that if we don't see like Him, we don't have to feel like Him? You see, when God shows up, our seeing becomes just a little bit clearer. But there's another thing that happens. And people tend to really get nervous when the preacher starts talking about this. Sharing. S-H-A-R-I-N-G. Most have visions or nightmares of the church being called to do like the church in Acts 2 did. You've heard me say it more times than not. Most churches are afraid of the Holy Spirit because they're afraid of what the Holy Spirit would do. They would, the Holy Spirit would move us out of our comfort zone because we all like to be comforting. We all like to be in places of comfort. I, you know, at home, I, I like my recliner. I don't like sitting on the sofa. That's my chair. Don't come to my house. I'm not going to offer you my recliner. Some of you are super nice. And when I've been to your house, I'd say, okay, well, where do I sit? Why do I ask that? I don't ask that because I'm being nice and polite. I'm asking because I know what it's like when somebody sits in my chair. 
don't sit in my chair. But when I go to your house, I'll ask, uh, which one do I not sit in? You know, I want to know. I, I want to know which one. And that, that's our comfort zone. I like my chair. I have a routine. I like my routine. This morning at 4, the dog was barking. He kind of interrupted that routine. <laughs> it's worse than having a kid. You'd get in trouble if you put the kid outside, wouldn't you? <laughs> Without supervision, of course. <laughs> but we get nervous when people start talking about sharing. Being given the same instructions is probably what we're afraid of more than anything else. Know the story of the rich young ruler? That's what people are afraid of. It is. They're afraid of having to give up those things that mean a lot to them. A lot to them. Money, things, possessions. God may tell you that. And if He does, he, He's not going to send His message to an old ugly preacher. He's going to tell you directly. He'll deliver it personally. But God expects us to share what we have, or in other words, that's what's been given to us with others. It's not really difficult. It's not hard to figure out what God's given you to share with somebody else. For some, it will be what it wasn't for Peter and John. I know people who possess the spiritual gift of giving, and God's given them money to share, and that's amazing. I know others who are possessed by their possessions. Not necessarily here, but I'm just saying in general. Every child should be able to share the greatest gift given to them. And that's Jesus. Jesus happens to be the best thing that could ever happen to you. And if you don't think that's the case then maybe you need to go back and recheck if it ever happened to you in the first place. Because that's where it meets the road. It's difficult to share with other people what you don't have. Whether it be Jesus, whether it be money, whether it be food. I've never known somebody who walks I've never known anybody to go up to a person, Georgia, have you ever had anybody ever come up to you and ask you for a ride? <laughs> no. Georgia doesn't want to drive. She, she, she walks everywhere. She can be on one side of town and you can stop off and do something and she'll be on the other side of town. It's amazing. But nobody's went up and said, Georgia, can you give me a ride? I, I'm not saying that to knock Georgia. I'm just saying that it's not something she can help out with. But now, Georgia can help out in choir. Georgia can help out in Sunday school. You see, if Georgia has Jesus, there's a lot of things Georgia can do. I've never gone to a soup kitchen, worked a soup kitchen, and usually it's those who do not have food that are asking for food. Nobody that's serving the food ever asks somebody coming through the line, hey, do you got any extra candy or any chips? Nobody will do that. Why? Because they don't have it. Same way with money. If you don't have it, you can't give it. If you don't possess Christ, you can't give Him away. You can't share Him with others. That's the concept of it. That's just the, the truth of the matter. It's difficult to share what you don't have. Pope Innocent. 
before whom a large sum of money was spread out, the Pope observed and he said this, You see, the church is no longer in the age in which she said, Silver and gold have I none. St. Thomas Aquinas replied, Neither can she any longer say, Rise up and walk. You see, it's the power that controls us. When God shows up, things change. Our perceptions change. Our seeing changes. Our sharing changes. But when God shows up, here's something that happened. Prayers are consistent. We discover this duo going up to the temple to pray at the appointed time because why? They understood the power of prayer. They understood intimacy and even pleasure found in talking with God. And during this time of ministry, they'd watch Him take time to pray. Even Jesus Himself. They've heard Him teach about prayer. And yes, from that Pentecostal or that Pentecost experience, they had learned firsthand the results of faithful, consistent praying. And they didn't want to miss an opportunity to talk with God. Their schedule now became secondary to their call to prayer. That's one sign of God showing up in our life is a renewed priority to praying because why when we pray we come to know, first of all, we know the presence of God. Apart from prayer, quite likely we'll never experience the manifest presence of Jehovah God. 120 believers prayed for 10 days before the presence of God fell in an unusual way. And when His presence comes, the world's power goes out the door. God's presence brings peace. It bring, the world brings pandemonium. His presence brings joy. The world brings jealousy. God's presence brings love. The world brings lust. God's presence changes things. And when God's Spirit fell at Pentecost, the people were already in one accord. Now they had hearts aglow and tongues that were on fire. They were ready to share. And the results were that many people heard and responded to this offer of salvation. Acts chapter 4, the Bible says the building shook. And when God fills your life and He fills your heart, it shakes up all parts of your life. That's the presence of God. But have you ever taken stock of the power of God? Abraham prayed for Amelia. Isaac prayed for Rebekah. Solomon prayed for his people. Elijah prayed for fire. And on and on it goes. And the results was healing. Rebekah had a child. Solomon experienced God's presence. Elijah saw fire fall and God's power displayed. Can you imagine what that was like? That's a whole other sermon. A faith and trust in God's power. Can I tell you, church? He wants to do for Pearsall, Texas what He did in the book of Acts. He wants to do it. He wants to do it. He's waiting for His people. He's waiting for that hunger. You know, when Billy Graham passed away, I know a lot of people have different thoughts on him, but really, for 50 plus years, I grew up on Billy Graham, W.A. Criswell, men like that. But you know who had the greatest influence on me? Wasn't Adrian Rogers, wasn't W.A. Criswell, wasn't Charles Stanley, wasn't Billy Graham. It was Dr. Wesley Barra, who was a retired school superintendent, who taught boys Sunday school class, high school. Man, he was boring. <laughs> Gail, he was a science teacher. 
He was more educated than most seminary or college professors. And when he would start to teach, it would just, oh, it was bad. <laughs> kind of like your preacher, minus the education part. But you know what stuck out to me more than anything else? Here was a retired superintendent of schools, a retired coach, who came back and taught science at the high school after having been superintendent at that current school, that's asking for trouble. And he was teaching a boy's Sunday school class on Sunday morning. But you know what was most important? He loved me every day. If I missed... He called me. If I missed, he searched me out in the hallways. He hunted me down. And he wanted to know why I was miss, missing. And he'd begin to tell me. He called me Blackie. He said, Blackie, God's got His hand on your life. You're just going to have to let Him. Well, Doc, you know, we had a ball game, and of course he knew that. His son was my catcher. But he never would let me go. He didn't give up on me. He didn't stop. He didn't say, I... It's not worth it. He's not going to listen. He's not going to pay attention. He kept on. He kept on. The power of God was evident in his life. His purposes were clear. When I felt called to the ministry, He was the first person I sought out. I went to him and I said, Doc, I, I want to talk to you about ministry. And he said, Blackie, I thought you were going into teaching, coaching. I said, yeah, Doc, but something's, something's not right. And he said, no, it's, it's right. I said, well, Doc, I, I, I don't have any seminary training. I didn't attend church when I was younger and little. I didn't know all those little stories that everybody knows and, and, and all of that stuff. And he said, you will. If God calls you, He's going to equip you. And that rang true to me. I listened to Him. And the purpose became clear was involved in the Baptist Student Union, met Susie, already had just taken a youth pastor's position, so she kind of married into the ministry side of it. We went back and we even served at the church where Dr. Barra attended my home church in First Baptist Elgin, Oklahoma. He's 96 years old. He's not teaching Sunday school anymore. But he's in church every Sunday. Every Sunday. Why? Because he knows the power of God. And the influence he's had on countless people that's crossed his paths. Y'all that are in business or in the teaching field, every day those students come in there. Every week, whether it's Awana or whether it's Sunday morning or whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in the public school system or the private school system, these kids come through these doors. And we don't have any idea what they've been through. 
what's happened to them, what kind of, oh, we might have an idea, but we really don't know. But my question is, is did they see Jesus in you that day? I love going up to the school. I love walking through the hallways of Tola to see the kids smile and laugh, to walk through the public schools and, and be called Father Brian. Hey, Father Brian. And at Tola, poor Jameson calls me Uncle Brian. I promise you, Susie, that I'm not his uncle. <laughs> but that's just how I'm wired. You may be wired a bit different, but that's okay. At least you're wired. You'll get that in a minute. You don't want to go through life with no power. And that power is not your power. It's what God does in you and your purpose becomes very clear. You become focused on what you want and how you're going to get there. Stephen Covey says that you begin with the end in mind. When God shows up, He causes our purpose to become very clear and He gives us what we need to fulfill those purposes. The greatest asset that we have as believers, those of you that know Christ, is the name of Jesus. That's it. That's the power which Peter invoked in the midst of the need. And today, that same power He wants to give us, we don't need to surrender to anybody else. It's not just something that our Pentecostal brothers enjoy. Yes, even Baptists can enjoy that power. We're saved. We're secured. We're sanctified by the name of Jesus. Devil runs. Demons flee. Darkness disappears. One day at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue's going to confess. Jesus is Lord. Now you may have people that you want to see that happen to. And if that's the case, you better check it at the door. Because it ought to be our job that no one goes there. We want them to experience Jesus or have that opportunity. That's what He gives us. That's our assignment. Assignment is a task that's given to benefit our growth. I had a different opinion about assignments in high school, college. I thought assignments were the teacher's revenge for how we acted during the day. Still question a couple of them. But many people go through this life not really sensing any specific assignment except to just survive. And you've heard me say it. God doesn't want us to just survive. I'm not in this just to get by. I don't want First Baptist Church Pearsall to just get by and survive. I, I, I want them to thrive and to grow. How do we do this? By discovering God's assignment. Listen, it takes a village. Not just to raise children, but to reach a city. It takes a church that's willing. It takes willing people who are willing to say, you know what I have, I give you. What I have, I give you. This is it. It's not much, but I, I, I give it to you. And we hand it to those in need. Many people are, may need it. And when we do that, people will be changed. When God shows up, he, he corrects our perceptions and He leads us to places that our prayers are more consistent and our purposes become clear and it results in lives that are, are, are changed and He begins to change our life. I mean, look at Peter. Before the Holy Spirit's coming at Pentecost, Peter overheard moderating a business meeting in the upper room. Imagine his 
confidence and, and, and his authority to, to do what God's called him to do, but I, I, I believe he was a changed man. No longer is he weeping over his denial. No longer is he ashamed of his actions. No longer is he afraid for his life. No, now he's energized. And this is how God energizes His people. That cold heart is set on fire. That hard heart or that calloused heart is cut by the sword of the Spirit. And even that cluttered heart is clean. That's what happens when God's people get right. And God shows up. Revival begins to happen. An awakening begins begins to happen. And then can we only experience that we're truly free. Oh, this is what our church needs. This is what I need when God shows up. His people change. And if people aren't changed, then they're not His people. And they didn't have that encounter. How does this change happen? By seeing the changed lives of others. That's how. Think about it. Go back to the gate. Beautiful. Peter and John offer the kind of help to the man that could only come from God. And watch what happens. They're strengthened. Peter offered to blind the man his right hand. For me, being right-handed, it means something. It symbolizes the hand of strength. Peter didn't ask the man to do it all by himself. Peter didn't say, well, you get up, you can walk. Peter offered a hand. People are looking for you and me to offer a hand. A senior adult sits at home behind their locked door afraid. A young girl feels alone and trapped because mom and dad just split. Teenage boy feels trapped because of the bullying that's taken place at school. The list goes on and on. And we can talk about abusive situations and so forth. Listen church, we are God's hand. We are His heart. We are God's helper to reach out with our spiritual hand which is in Christ to offer strength and hope to those who are hurting. The only thing I give God is my Sunday morning attendance. And please know, Sunday morning attendance is expected in Scripture, commanded. But there is more. Be reminded what Malachi 1.10 says. It's a sobering statement from God. It says this, I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so that you would no longer kindle a useless fire on my altar. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord, and I will accept no offering from your hands. And I'm sorry to say that God's grace is not only given for our eternal security and pleasure and our comfort, but we can sing songs in a, an amazing building, but it's given us to share with those that have not. That's our commandment. It's our responsibility. You see people saved, come to know Christ. You know, the healed man did hold on to Peter and John in appreciation and admiration. It wasn't Peter and John he was praising. When we do God's work, God's way with God's power, God responds and people know it's Him and they believe. What is interesting to me is how quickly this man learned to walk. How quickly this man learned to run. And yes, Baptist, even dance. <gasps> he knew no human possessed that kind of power. How else could this man have been free from being a paraplegic? How can lives be changed from the inside out? How can there be a difference in society? How else could a soul be saved from a place called hell? It's only possible when God shows up 
among his people. Amen. Causing his people to be obedient to his word. It's the result of a miracle. It's a result of God showing up. That's what happens when God shows up. People's lives are changed. Let's stand together.